Hi, I'm Lisa. In this video, you will learn some very common English expressions that you need to know to sound fluent when you're speaking English. One of your favorite native speakers from my videos, Drake, is back to teach you a lot of expressions. And I will teach you the expressions that he's using while he's talking. There's a lot to learn in this video. One of the main ways that you can recognize a native speaker compared to a non-native speaker of a language is that the native speaker uses a lot of expressions. For example, a non-native speaker might say, the taller basketball player has an advantage. But a native speaker might say, the taller basketball player has the upper hand. Here is Drake explaining the expression upper hand. To have the upper hand is like saying to have an advantage. For example, if two guys are playing basketball and one guy is six foot tall and one guy is a little shorter, the guy that's taller has the upper hand at a game of basketball. Drake will teach you a lot more expressions with the word hand. Drake and I met at the Manhattan Beach Pier to film this video. Manhattan Beach is a neighborhood in Los Angeles. Before you learn the expressions with the word hand, I want to make sure that you can pronounce hand perfectly. There are three things to pay attention to. The first thing is the ah sound, ah, hand. And because the ah is followed by an n, which is a nasal sound, we need to add a little extra schwa sound, a little uh sound between the ah and the n, like this. An. So we don't say hand. It's not hand. It's hand. Hand. Let me explain to you why this is important. Listen to the difference between these two words that contain the a ah sound. Hat. Hand. Hat. Hand. Notice that the a ah in hand has that little extra sound. So it's longer. Hand. Repeat after me. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. And that means help me. And the third thing is hand is a noun and it's usually a key word in a sentence. So it needs to be stressed. And when we stress a word, we make the vowel sound longer and a little bit louder. Please give me a hand. I go into a lot of detail about how to stress vowels in the American Accent course, which you can get on my website. I teach all of the main 15 vowel sounds and all of these little details that you need to know so that you can pronounce them perfectly. And now, let's listen to Drake. The first expression that he will teach you is hand me down. Hand me down, what does that mean? Hand me down. It's usually like a second-hand item. Um, it's an item that was owned previously and someone passed it down to you, meaning that they gave it to you. Uh, a hand-me-down sweater maybe was like your big brother's sweater and once he grew out of it or got too big for it, he gave it to you. Drake said, second-hand item. Let's listen. Hand-me-down. It's usually like a second-hand item. If something is second-hand, it's not new. It's something that has already been owned or used. And you can say, that store sells secondhand furniture. Or you can find interesting styles at the secondhand clothing store. Drake used the expression to pass something down. Let's listen. It's an item that was owned previously and someone passed it down to you, meaning that they gave it to you. To pass something down to someone means to give something to a younger person, especially to family. You can say, my older sister passed her dresses down to me. Or, my grandmother passed this ring down to me. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression to grow out of something. Maybe it was like your big brother's sweater and once he grew out of it or got too big for it, he gave it to you. To grow out of something means to become too big to wear. It doesn't fit anymore because the child is older or bigger. You can say, children grow out of their clothes quickly. He grew out of his shoes again. Drake explained another meaning of the word secondhand. Secondhand smoke. Do you know what that means? 
For example, if you're in a car with someone while they're smoking, you may not be the one smoking, but it could negatively impact your health because you're there. You're getting secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke exposure can endanger the health of children. To know something like the back of your hand. To know something like the back of your hand is to know something really, really well. For example, you see the back of your hand a lot, so that's why people say this. You know a mole on the back of your hand really well. So if you know something like the back of your hand, you know it like it's part of you. Can you give me an example sentence? When I go back to the Midwest in uh, northern Indiana and Chicago, I know those streets like the back of my hand. To know something like the back of your hand means to know something very well, to be very familiar with something. I've studied for many weeks. I know this English book like the back of my hand. I've lived here all my life. I know this neighborhood like the back of my hand. My hands are tied. My hands are tied. Uh, I wish I could help you, but I can't. My hands are tied. Um, there's something I can't do for you. I wish I could, but my hands are tied. I'm unable to do something for you. To have an extra pair of hands. I need an extra pair of hands. Uh, if someone asks for an extra pair of hands, that means that they're just asking for help. They need um, someone's help with something that they're doing. They don't have enough hands for the, for the situation at hand. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression at hand. He said, the situation at hand. They don't have enough hands for the, for the situation at hand. A situation at hand is a situation that needs to be dealt with. A situation that needs your attention. And you can use it this way. Let's deal with the situation at hand. Or you can say, let's not get distracted. Let's focus on the task at hand. Or let's focus on the matter at hand. To have the upper hand. To have the upper hand is like saying to have an advantage. For example, if two guys are playing basketball and one guy is six foot tall and one guy is a little shorter, the guy that's taller has the upper hand at a game of basketball. To have the upper hand is to have a position of advantage power or control. You can say to have the upper hand or to gain the upper hand or to get the upper hand. When their best player got injured, our team gained the upper hand. If I become fluent in English, I will have the upper hand over other job candidates. Or you can use it like this. Don't let your emotions gain the upper hand over you. To be in good hands. To be in good hands means that um, you can rest assured, you can relax, uh, I won't let anything bad happen to you, I'll make sure that any business that we're doing between the two of us gets done perfectly, all professional, or you know, you're in good hands, um, I'll take care of you. You can say, this is our new employee, he's an excellent employee, you're in good hands with him, something like that? Yeah, you could say that, or you know, if you're letting the babysitter watch your kids, that babysitter is going to say, hey, don't worry, your kid is in good hands with me. Let's listen to how Drake used the expression to rest assured. He said, you can rest assured. To be in good hands means that um, you can rest assured, you can relax. If someone says to you, you can rest assured, that means you don't need to worry about it. You can be certain that something will happen. Please rest assured that we will take good care of your mother. Talk to the hand. Talk to the hand. A lot of people will say, talk to the hand, like that. Talk to the hand. <laughs> talk to the hand is basically, it's a negative connotation. People that tell you this, talk to the hand, maybe they can be playful with it, but it's a way to say, I'm not listening to you right now. You can talk to, to my hand. Um, I'm not going to be listening. I'm mad at you maybe, or I'm zoned out of the conversation. I'm mentally checked out of the conversation. You can just talk to my hand. They go, talk to the hand, go away. Sheldon, talk to the hand. Listen to the way that Drake used zoned out. He said, zoned out of the conversation. I'm mad at you maybe, or I'm zoned out of the conversation. You can say to zone out or to be zoned out. And that means to lose concentration, to stop paying attention. You're not focused anymore. The class was so boring that I completely zoned out. I'm not interested in baseball. When they talk about it, I just zone out.
the pain medication made me feel pretty zoned out. Hands down, for example, he won hands down. Hands down means that there's no argument. It's obvious, yeah, it's obvious, there's no debate, it's not controversial. The man won the game hands down. He won it by a landslide, no <laughs> doubt. Hands down means without question, with no difficulty, unquestionably or easily. You can say, they won the game hands down. There's no question in anybody's mind. Or you can say, this is hands down the best dessert I've ever had. Drake used the expression, by a landslide. Let's listen. The man won the game hands down. He won it by a landslide, no <laughs> doubt. A landslide is a big win, a win by a big margin. You can say, our team scored 21 points and the other team only scored three points, so we won by a landslide. The handwriting is on the wall. The handwriting is on the wall. Uh, I've also heard people maybe shorten it by saying the writing is on the wall. I think it's just a way to say that it's obvious. It's like, um, don't you see the clues? There's clues everywhere. They're on the wall. The writing is on the wall. You know, That's, that type of thing. The handwriting is on the wall or the writing is on the wall. It's obvious. This is usually used to mean that there's a clear sign that something bad will happen in the future. You can clearly see it because the handwriting is on the wall. And you can say, I should look for a new job. The handwriting is on the wall that my company will go bankrupt. Or you can say, nobody is surprised that they're getting a divorce. Everybody saw the handwriting on the wall. Put your hands together. Um, put, when someone says put your hands together, a lot of times you'll hear this before a show, maybe with a host of a show or something. When you put your hands together, um, it's a way for someone to tell you to clap. Like, put your hands together, give them an applause, so, clap for them. If, if you go to a concert, maybe like a, a Justin Bieber concert, and, and they say, okay, everyone, Justin Bieber's gonna come out. Everyone put your hands together for Justin Bieber, and everyone's gonna start cheering and clapping their hands and screaming for him. It doesn't always have to necessarily mean clapping your hands. That's usually what it means, but you can scream, you can cheer. It's the idea of giving a lot of energy before a show. Let's listen to how some other people used put your hands together. Please put your hands together and welcome Srujan Misala to the stage. Please put your hands together for Rihanna. To throw your hands up. Um, to throw your hands up. It's like you give up on a situation. You're over it. You're tired of the situation. Um, you, you're, you're annoyed with it maybe. You're throwing your hands up. Drake said, you're over it. Let's listen. It's like you give up on a situation, you're over it. The expression is to be over it. So you can say, I'm over it, or he's over it. This is usually slang, but not always. And that means I'm not interested in something anymore. I don't have strong emotions about it. It can be strong emotions about a person or a situation. I don't care anymore. It doesn't affect me anymore. I'm over it. Or for special emphasis, you can say, I'm so over it. I don't care anymore. I got to hand it to you. I got to hand it to you. You did a good job at the football game the other day. Um, you're admitting something to someone that maybe you don't want to admit, or maybe you do. Maybe you're letting them know a compliment or something like that. So it's a compliment, basically. If you're in class, for example, if I'm in math class, and maybe I'm usually not the best guy at figuring out math problems, but I get one right in front of everyone, my teacher might say, Drake, I gotta hand it to you. You did a good job with that problem. You know, something like that. To go hand in hand, for example, those two things go hand in hand. To go hand in hand, those things are perfect together. They're a really great combination. They're a great duo. They go together well. Um, uh, growing up, I used to eat a lot of peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. People would say peanut butter and jelly, they go hand in hand. On hand. On hand. Um, when you have something on hand, you have it maybe in your pocket or in your backpack. You have it with you. It's accessible to you. You have it on hand. Um, if I'm walking around outside with a friend um, and I'm cold, he might pull out of his, uh, his jacket pocket. He might say, oh, don't worry. I have some gloves on hand. 
you, you can go ahead and take these gloves. I have them on hand. Or maybe if you're camping and you know, you're trying to uh, cut something, you're trying to cut a rope, your friend might say, hey, no worries, I have a pocket knife on hand. It's accessible to me. Take it. Thank you so much, Drake. No problem. And you can also follow Drake on Instagram. The link is below. I suggest that you watch this video again and pause after each expression that you learn. You can also write the expressions in a notebook. Make your own sentences with these expressions. That's really, really important. That way you're much more likely to remember it and then you can have active knowledge instead of passive knowledge. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To get the two courses, the American Accent Course and the 400 Advanced Words You Must Know for Fluent English, go to accurateenglish.com.